Welcome to Project Serum, where we are committed to helping you learn more about the foundations of decentralized finance and blockchain technology. Remember to click the subscribe button and turn on your notifications to follow us for all things DeFi and to learn more about Project Serum's faster, cheaper, more powerful decentralized exchange. This video is the third in a series that will cover the topic, what is a central limit order book or CLOB and how does a CLOB work? In this specific video, we're going to cover how a CLOB works and see an example of a CLOB in action. The process in which a CLOB matching order works is simple. As we break it down, it's important to note that all these steps are actually happening in real time. First, the makers of the market, also referred to as market makers, are required to submit their intent to transact, either buy or sell order, while specifying other information such as price and volume. Secondly, the exchange records all of the market maker's intent, or order, and organizes them in a database, or order book. Once organized based on priority, the CLOB exchange proceeds to publish the order book to all users. After that, another party on the receiving end takes the corresponding order. Here, the taker can either be a buyer or a seller depending on the order submitted and will be required to accept related orders based on preset pricing and volume. It's as simple as that. Essentially, the order matching concept takes effect only when there is an overlap in the order book. Usually, this happens when multiple orders share precisely the same attributes, such as the same price and volume. When this happens, most CLOB exchanges step in and match these orders manually using the FIFO policy, as earlier mentioned. An instance where CLOB is employed can be related to a typical limit order book which consists of a list of orders at different prices. Notably, you will most likely come across an order book if you trade stock, futures, options, or securities. Using the stock market as an example, if there is a sell order of 11.38 to about 12.50 in an exchange database, and on the other hand, there's also a buy order between 11.36 to about 10.30, either of the following actions can take place. If multiple shares are offered at either sell order price, then a taker, i.e. a buyer, can buy multiple shares at the corresponding prices. If multiple shares are offered at either buy order price, then a taker, i.e. seller, can acquire the bids at corresponding share prices. Orders are first ranked according to their price. Then, orders of the same price are ranked depending on when they were entered into the book. When a new order can be matched against an existing order, it gets executed. Otherwise, the new order enters the database and waits for another order to offset it. For example, if you enter a limit order to buy at a price less than the lowest selling price, the order stays waiting until someone decides to sell at your price. Likewise, if you enter a limit order to sell at a price higher than what anyone wants to sell for, your order waits until someone is willing to sell at that price. Thanks for watching. In our next video, we'll take a look at other methodologies, other than CLOB, that exchanges may employ. We hope you join us to learn more.